This video is about showing you some of the new changes to the 20, Sign Up 2018. First thing to look at is the new GBXML import wizard. Traditionally in Sign Up, we've always put the floor plans in first and then added the GBXML data. Now it's one of the options is to do this the other way around, where all the heights can be set up from the Revit model or the, the 3D package bring, creating the GBXML geometry, which means you as the engineer don't need to set the heights up initially. So what we can do is set up the first option here, GBXML project. We can go and grab the GBXML file that we want to use. Give it a name. Here you can see all the heights have been set up. And what we can do is skip levels. If all the levels are the same, we can skip the levels. Initially you get a basic template background. This then takes us to the building program where it automatically introduces the GPXML geometry and that now populates the model. What we will then do is in the tools manage DXF bring in the floor plans afterwards so we can go and browse to pick up the floor plans pick up the plans we want that then brings in each separate floor so it's really a reverse of the process. It means that the geometry sets the precedent on all of the heights and you can bring the floor plans in after. One advantage of this is course it means you can get some results out fairly quickly without having to manage your drawings, um, which makes life a bit easier and then later on you can introduce your floor plans um, later on. Another new addition is the ability to change room names with prefixes, suffixes and renumber rooms sequentially. Particularly handy if you're doing a hotel or something like that where you've got a lot of room uh, renaming. Um, for example on the ground floor here we've got four rooms. What I could easily do on the edit rename rooms option is to isolate by floor level or profile so I could add um, for example by profile. If I then want to take all of the rooms labelled lab 1G I can do that. Take each, of in each individual one if I want to. Or I can grab them as a group we can basically re rename all of the rooms. So if all of these rooms are going to change to something else, I can replace. I could look for the word lab and replace them with room. Okay, that, that means that all of these are now changed reference. Because all these on the ground floor, I could then isolate by floor. I could then um, add text as a prefix. I could call this gnd hyphen as a prefix and you can change your rooms. I could renumber these rooms if I want to renumber them. I could say all of these rooms are starting off on uh, 100. Okay, that, and that renames all my rooms. So there's a room renaming tool that you'll find probably quite handy. Another change we've made is to the entries to make them easier to understand. In the edit general plant, we now have the ability to ask the user whether the air is treated or not. So gone is that silly option where we used to put zero to represent the ambient condition. It's either treated or it's not. If it is treated, you tick the box, you put the supply temperature from the fan core, uh, cooling coil or heater battery with the respective entries here. Obviously it makes life easier to understand. If you know the air is treated, it's treated. If it's not, it's not. Um, and that will then apply the fresh air to the space depending on your plant arrangements. So we've made that easier to understand. The upshot of this is well, when you look at the results, um, you'll be able to see the, on, for example, the room gains, you'll be able to it'll break down the air handling unit load for you in terms of the fresh air requirement on the space. Um, so that will do that for you as well and display it on a printout. So it, it, it saves you having to run two calculations, one for the air untreated, one for the air treating, deducting one from the other. You can do it on a zonal basis and there you can see numerically you've got the, the cooling co uh, duty on there for the, fan for the uh, fresh air as well as the space load. So these space loads are excluding fresh air. If we then go back and get rid of the treated fresh air by saying no it's not treated, we can then run the numbers. And we can see there the numbers now have changed and obviously the, 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 the way the calculation works is that fresh air gain will have a bearing on the fresh air to the spaces. Um, and that may change the peak time that the building peaks out as well because if your, gain, your gains are predominantly fresh air as opposed to local spaces then it can shift the, the actual load of the building and to a different time of day as well and that's reflected here. So we've made the entries easier to understand 
and we've also applied the results in an easy to understand way as well. Another adi uh, addition is the ability to input circular grills either subsequently you can tick or untick the box to make them circular or not and also obviously when you're setting up the system you can determine whether your grills from this point onwards are circular as well and that will be obviously translated across to the Scilink where we have a new library for circular grills. We have a new 3D viewer so you can see how your systems pan out in 3D. This is available from the uh, SIMAP menu uh, 3D icon. Um, initially it's a wireframe but we are going to populate this uh, fairly soon with uh, design and uh, commissioning data so you'll be able to click on and have a fully annotated 3D layout for schematic purposes. You'll be able to switch on and off the floor plan and you'll also be able to isolate floors independently. So. We're working towards 3D, this is our first effort, um, giving you an idea of how your 3D services pan out um, on that basis. Another new addition from Popified by popular demand is some more methodologies for sizing um, domestic hot and cold water services. So you can see here from the pull down now, as well as the standard SIBSI demand units in BS6700, you've also got the CIPHE loading units and BSEN806 loading units. So as an engineer you can do any of the main standards used in the UK at the moment. Another major issue that users were having was defining larger areas. If I was to define this large corridor area, you weren't able to zoom and pan whilst defining the room. So if, for example, if I start my room definition, I'm able to physically pan my room around whilst taking off the boundary of the space. That should make life an awful lot easier people that found it difficult in the past you used to have to have the entire room displayed on the screen sometimes zoomed out to such an extent that it's difficult to pick the, pick the start point so now what we can do is run around the boundary of the space fairly quickly we can then click back on the start point and complete the room so that's another addition we've got We've also got the ability to flip rooms as well as copy rooms, which is the score equivalent of rotating. So for example, if I wanted to copy some rooms, I can very quickly copy a room and drop it in a, another room profile. Drop that to there. I could then squeeze it in a bit. Now if I wanted to copy this room to another side of the building where the windows are on the north side, what I could do is cop copy the room vertically, or flip the room vertically, and then what I could do is copy the room, pan out to the other side of the building, I can then place it on the plan and then stretch the plan to suit the actual layout. So if the rooms are the same you've got the ability to copy and now I could flip this horizontally and there's my line where the door is. So you've got the ability to mirror rooms effectively or copy them through the various axes. So this is particularly handy if you're doing a hotel or uh, a space where you need to flip and copy spaces um, very easily. One of the new electric features is the ability to add uh, main supply boards and associate those with final boards with a view to importing those as a schematic into the 70th edition cable sizing program. So here you can see we have a supply board nominated as such. Um, we can then associate the, the, the load on the supply board from the distribution board by inserting the switching in the usual way and then what we can also do is insert cable lengths and connect the supply board into the final distribution board as well adding any extra heights in there. Because these boards are now connected what will happen is when you bring into wiring you can bring in these boards associated with each other to create a schematic. So we've now applied a couple of boards onto the main supply board so we can then import that into the schematic as mentioned earlier. So here we are in the electrics program, the wiring program. So when we use the import facility, we can then select the project we are working on. That brings all our boards in, which we can then import. Any boards that aren't connected in from the schematic will not see any cables. So then what we can do is drag this whole series of supply boards into position. And then we can rearrange the boards suit our own requirements. So you can see here you're getting a schematic layout shown. 
you rearrange the cables and any boards that aren't connected in you merely join in by inserting a cable put some protection on it and then insert your main cable from your transformer into your supply board ok put some protection on it then when we display calculate we can ensure our cable sizes schematically so the idea is you connect your final distribution boards to your main board in the electrics program use the import facility and then rearrange your layout